Hello, Omar. My name's Amy. Would it be okay if I examined you? Yes. On general inspection, note the patient's demeanour, their body mass, any chest deformity or scar, and whether they are confused or distressed. Also pay attention to any extra equipment, such as oxygen support or inhalers. Measure the radial pulse, and whilst in the same position, assess respiratory rate and pattern. Note any unusual effort or noise in breathing, such as stridor. Also check the patient's blood pressure. Could I have a look at your hands? Look in the hands for tobacco staining, peripheral cyanosis and finger clubbing. This is most commonly associated with lung malignancy, fibrosis or chronic infection. There are four features, loss of nail bed angle, which should be assessed by looking across the nail and nail bed. Increased nail bed fluctuation, which should be assessed with the thumbs on the pulp of the finger and the index fingers trying to move the nail in its bed. There is also increased bulk of soft tissue over the terminal phalanges and increased nail curvature in later stages. Hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy includes finger clubbing. Is this sore? No. And also painful swelling of the wrists and ankles. Check for tremor in the hands. Could you hold your hands out for me? Bend your wrist back. Watch for a few seconds. A coarse, flapping tremor is seen with severe ventilatory failure Thank and you. carbon dioxide retention. Look at the neck for accessory muscle use and the JVP. Could you open your mouth for me? Look under the tongue for central cyanosis. Thank you. I'm going to gently feel the front of your neck. It may be a little uncomfortable. Palpate the trachea to detect the cricosternal distance and any lateral shift. Please could you take a deep breath in? Also feel for tracheal tug, which okay. may be found in severe hyperinflation. Use your hands to detect chest expansion, which should be symmetrical. Please can you take a deep breath in? Watch how the thumbs move with respiration. Reduced expansion indicates abnormality on the same side. Percussion allows you to listen for the pitch and loudness of the percussed note and to feel for post-percussive vibrations. It is performed in sequence over corresponding areas on both sides of the chest. Place the palm of your left hand on the chest with your middle finger slightly separated. Press the middle finger of your left hand firmly against the chest aligned with the underlying rib over the area to be percussed. Strike the centre of the middle phalanx of your left middle finger with the tip of your right middle finger, using a loose swinging movement of the wrist and not the forearm. Remove the right middle finger quickly so the note generated is not damped. Work your way down the chest from side to side, comparing the left and right. Percussing normal lung produces a resonant note. Percussion over solid structures, for example the liver or heart, produces a dull note. Please could you take deep breaths in and out with your mouth open. Most of the sounds reaching the chest wall are best heard with the bell. Auscultate both sides alternately, comparing findings over a large number of equivalent positions to ensure that localised abnormalities are not missed. Listen anteriorly from above the clavicle down to the sixth rib, and laterally from the axilla to the eighth rib. Assess the quality and amplitude of the breath sounds. Identify any gap between inspiration and expiration, and listen for added sound. Avoid auscultation within three centimeters of the midline anteriorly or posteriorly, as these areas may transmit sounds directly from the trachea or main bronchi. Bronchial breathing is a high-pitched breath sound with a hollow or blowing quality similar to that heard over the trachea during tidal breathing. Bronchial breath sounds are found whenever normal lung tissue is replaced by uniformly conducting tissue and the underlying major bronchus is patent. This happens with pulmonary consolidation from pneumonia at the top of a pleural effusion and over areas of dense fibrosis. Be careful not to ask the patient to take exaggerated breaths for a prolonged period, as this may cause dizziness or even tetany. Please could you say 111 one, one, 
each time I put my stethoscope on your chest. One, one, one. One, one, one. Over normal lung, the low-pitched components of speech are heard and high-pitched components are attenuated. Over consolidated lung, in pneumonia for instance, the numbers are clearly audible. Over an effusion or area of collapse, the sounds will be muffled. Whispering is not heard over the normal lung, but in consolidation, the sound is transmitted, producing whispering pectoriloquy. One, one, one. One, one, one. Again, you should listen over both one, sides one, alternately, one. comparing findings over a large number of one, equivalent one, positions. One, one, one. One, one, one. Next, we examine the neck and chest from behind. Please could you sit forward for me and swing your legs over the edge of the bed. Examine for cervical lymphadenopathy. Could you look straight ahead? I'm going to examine your neck. Systematically work your way through the lymph node groups. Start anteriorly with the submental, then submandibular, and then the upper, middle and lower cervical nodes. Also feel the groups in the posterior triangle, along the border of the trapezius muscle, and in the supraclavicular fossa. There is a group of nodes felt behind the ear, the post-auricular nodes. Feel for the scalene nodes above the first rib. Please could you tilt your head to the right. This helps relax the sternocleidomastoid, allowing you to press your finger down behind and the clavicle. Again, to the left. Place your index finger between the clavicle and sternocleidomastoid muscle down gently onto the first rib. Thank you. Inspect the chest from the back, looking for deformities of the spine or chest wall or thoracotomy scars. Repeat the assessment of chest wall expansion from posteriorly. Place your fingers along the ribs and watch your thumbs to track the motion. Thank you. Could you cross your arms in front of your chest? We also percuss the chest from posteriorly. To percuss the upper posterior chest wall, ask the patient to fold their arms in front of them, thereby moving the scapula laterally. Do not percuss near the midline, as this produces a dull node from the solid structures of the thoracic spine and paravertebral muscles. Percussion over a solid organ or consolidated lung will produce a dull note. Map out any abnormal areas by percussing from resonant to dull. Pneumothorax will produce a hyper-resonant note. Percussion over fluid, a pleural effusion, will produce an extremely dull note classically described as stony dull. Basal dullness due to elevation of the diaphragm is easily confused with pleural fluid. The chest x-ray is an important adjunct to good clinical examination in diagnosing diseases of the chest. Please could you take deep breaths with your mouth open. We repeat auscultation from the back. Again, compare left with right and listen at a good number of positions to make sure that you don't miss a localised abnormality. As well as breath sounds, you may hear added sounds. The most common types are crackles, wheeze and rubs. Crackles are interrupted non-musical sounds and they can result from a number of different pathologies. Concentrate on when in the respiratory cycle they occur and their character, whether fine, medium or coarse. Sometimes added sounds can be due to bubbling in secretions in the larger airways. 
If you suspect this is the case, take your stethoscope off the chest and ask the patient to cough. Crackles which are due to disease affecting the bronchioles or alveoli will not be affected. Wheeze has a musical quality and implies airway narrowing, commonly heard in asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. You should time it in relation to the respiratory cycle. Wheeze tends to be louder on expiration. This is in contrast to stridor, which is heard in inspiration only. You may hear wheeze on inspiration, and this implies severe airway narrowing. However, the degree of the wheeze is not useful in determining how severe the airway obstruction is. In the most severe bronchospasm, the chest may be silent. Measuring the peak expiratory flow rate is an easy bedside test, and now an important part in the assessment of asthma. Each time I put my stethoscope on your chest, please could you say one, one, one. One, one, one. One, one, one. We have already discussed how increased vocal resonance can demonstrate sound transmission through consolidated lung. One, one, one. The other added sound that you are likely to come across during normal auscultation is a plural friction rub. This is a creaking sound similar to that produced by bending stiff leather or treading in fresh snow. It is produced when inflamed parietal and visceral pleura move over one another. A rub is best heard with the stethoscope diaphragm. It may be heard only on deep breathing, at the end of inspiration and beginning of expiration. A pleural rub is normally associated with pleuritic pain and it may be heard over areas of inflamed pleura in pulmonary infarction, pneumonia or vasculitis. If the pleura adjacent to the pericardium is involved, a pleuropericardial rub may also be heard. Pleural friction rubs disappear if an effusion separates the pleural surfaces. Thank you. Please could you swing yourself back round and lie again on the bed. Lastly, examine the legs, looking for bilateral edema of core pulmonale, signs of a deep vein thrombosis, or erythema nodosum, which may be associated with sarcoid. Thank you.